in one way. And this is a little clip that's going to snap right in there. And I'm going to put it right in here. Uh, all right, I'm going to connect up here to my uh, hard drive. Um, I, you know, Patrick, you could tell me. I, maybe it's superstitious of me, but I don't like to have, when I have a situation like this with one cable and it's got three devices that I could connect up to it. I kind of, I don't like to put all my devices on one wire. Well, you know it's what I'm like saying? putting all of your eggs in one basket. Absolutely distribute right. Distribute it around. It may not make a difference, but you know what? Be a little superstitious. Why take a chance? Spread well, it around. I'll tell you where you especially don't want to do that is with fans, because if, for instance, something, one of them dies, you don't want all of the fans to go out all at once. That would be bad. I like to keep some cooling going. So I'm going to put that one in my hard drive. It's rounded also on the uh, corners here, so again, uh, there's only one way to put this in. Most of the stuff, there's only one way to connect these things. There's only a few things like the floppy drive that will give you some leeway for error. And now you see, I really have a mess of spaghetti in here. And I'm going to really try to tidy this up, get this stuff out of the way, so that there's a free flow of air through here and out of the case, and that this doesn't get in the way. What you really want to make sure is that there are no wires anywhere near fan blades, because what's going to happen? Well, the fan blade will eventually strip off the insulation, cause a short circuit. You could even have a fire in there. So be very careful about that. Make sure all these wires are well away from the fan blades, well away from anywhere they can get into trouble. You take a look inside this case. Now, this is actually not too bad. We're still cleaning up the layout of the cables. But deep inside the Pentium 4 system we're building is an ATX connector. And just next to the ATX connector and half hidden by this cable here is oh, an additional that. power connector. So it would probably behoove you to install, in this case, this particular machine. We normally don't do this to install the power connectors first. But you know what? I'm just not smart enough to do that. So You're I'm going to put that in place. You're and I've got my ATX man. connector. And just slide it right down in there until you get a nice firm connection. Well, I'm feeling pretty good. I've, I've checked all my cables. I got everything in here. I've actually used some twist ties, as we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. some of those special plastic ties, not, of course, the ones you get for garbage bags, but these electrical safe <laughs> Although uh, ties. Although I've seen the garbage not bag. Not a good time. idea, I don't think, yeah. to uh, get some of the cables out of the way so we got good free airflow. Mm -hmm. In fact, I feel so confident I even put one of the panels, not both. Dude, you put both the panels on, I guarantee you, you're going to jinx yourself. You'll have to take <laughs> something apart to you're make right. it boot. So I just feel half confident, so I put one of the panels on. <laughs> when I put it back, though, and I didn't replace it with the regular screws, I used these great thumb screws. It makes it very easy when I want to open the case at another time just to very unscrew nice. it. So and I'm going to do that with the other side. You ready for the moment of truth? Let's do it. All right, now that we got all the parts together, it's almost time to plug these babies in and start them up. Follow along with us, techtv.com slash build a PC. Coming up next, we're going to show you how to plug in, boot up, configure your BIOS, and troubleshoot if things don't go exactly as planned. But first, let's recap. We've now installed the various cards we need inside the PC. We've, we've connected them all up. We've installed a modem, and we attached the cables to that, and we've attached all the power cables inside. One cable we haven't attached yet, because it's the last thing you do is the cable on the outside, the power supply to the plug. We'll do that, and then we're going to start it up. All right, now it's time to fire this puppy up and see if it actually works. No this kidding. is the moment of truth. I'm so excited. We, we've got it all set up here. We've got our, our mouse mm -hmm. and our keyboard, our power supply, our network interface. Shall we start it? That, that's oh, the keyboard sure. that's going to go right into the keyboard uh, connection now, there. Usually these are actually color coded. Green for the mouse, purple for the keyboard. Well, that's pictures on them. One of the disadvantages of making your own PC is sometimes you don't have that. Yeah. That you know, This is something that if you bought a PC, you'd have a road map, you know, but you look at you know better because you we built it. The you video. know how it all goes. Should we plug in an Ethernet or modem just for I'll fun? tell you why we're going to need Ethernet on this okay. one. You need a net connection to install our operating system. We're going to install oh Windows boy. XP today. And so when we install it, it's going to go out on the Internet and, uh, and say, here I am. I'm all really right. nervous. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, just take a deep breath. Relax. If it doesn't start up immediately, it's you not know what the we're going to do? We're going to do a little troubleshooting. A troubleshooter and we'll fix it, okay? Now, All by right. the way, I'm leaving it open, and it's very important that you do the same, because I want to look, the first thing I want to look at when I press the power button is to see if these fans are operating. If they're not, I'm going to turn it off right away. I'm not going to fry my processor. So look, this is the most important fan, but look at all the other fans. Make sure the fans are operating. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, let's, let's press this power button. In three, two, one. 
All right, the fan's on. That's great. That fan's on. That fan's on. All I'm right. feeling good. This is a good sign. Look, we got a boot up message on the screen. We got That's the a card. very we good got strike. The BIOS. Now we're going to go into the BIOS. So we should tell the folks at home what the BIOS is, what this, what this is mess this? looks like. What is this I'm looking at? <laughs> I want to call it, thanks to a novel I once read, the built-in operating system. Uh-uh, it's the basic input-output <laughs> system. It lives in the chipset inside the motherboard. It, it controls all the basic functions of the PC. When you hit that power switch, power goes into the motherboard, and the chipset wakes up, and it looks around and goes, okay, I got a graphics card, I, I got a hard drive, I'm, I'm a computer, I've got a chip, I've got memory. It goes through its own little checklist goes through the checklist, it sees everything at once, it's going to go to your hard drive and look for the operating system. If you don't have an operating system installed, which we don't yet, we haven't installed our operating system, it's just going to get a little upset because it's going to go, I haven't found an operating system, what's going on? But before you even get to that stage, you're going to change any settings you need to change in your BIOS. For instance, I've disabled the onboard sound card because we put our own sound sure. card in. And you might want to do things like that. This, as I said, you want to look at the hardware monitor. That's going to tell you if you'd set up everything and if the speed is correct, the CPU fan is running. And then I do need, in fact, to change mm -hmm. on this machine, and I'm trying to find where to do that, the RAM speed and the, and the, and the bus speed on this. Now, thing. if we hadn't been able to get into the BIOS, folks, probably what would have happened is we either wouldn't have seen that the first thing that shows up on the screen there is a little sort of a little mini message from your graphics card. Then you get stuff from your motherboard. Here's what happens, though. If that doesn't work, remember how we told you how it was important to connect your speaker? Here's why. The power on self test. It's called a post test. If something's missing, the memory, the, the chip, any, you know, the graphics board, what's going to happen is it's going to start beeping at you. It's going to sound like Morse code. Well, those codes, you write that down. It could be too short, too long, one, all these different codes. You go in your motherboard manual, it'll give you a list of those post codes, those power on self-test codes. It'll say, oh, your graphics card isn't working or your memory isn't working. Shut the machine down. Make sure the part it's looking for is properly installed and away you go. This system, to get into the BIOS mm -hmm. setup, I press the delete key. It'll vary. You'll have to read the message when you first see the computer booting up. This is a screen. Look, we don't have an operating system installed on here, but we can get software to run. This is software that's built into the operating system. Uh, built into the hardware, I should say, that allows us to change some settings. One setting you're, of course, going to want to change right away is the date and time. It probably won't be set correctly, so let's get that set all right. We're going to be New Year's Day 2002, the f back to the future. Now I want to set the time as well. Uh, normally it'll automatically detect all the different drives. You won't have to do anything. You do want to make sure that it sees the floppy drive. That's a very good sign. And it sees all the memory too. You can see over there on the on the right hand side mm -hmm. of the screen. We've got all the 256 megs of RAM we installed. We can look at some other features here. These are advanced features like what boots first. I'm going to change the first boot device right here to CD-ROM because we're going to install our operating system from CD-ROM. I'll also take a look at some of the other things. You can browse around. Be careful. Don't modify things willy-nilly. There's yeah, If you don't know what you're changing, <laughs> yeah. Don't change it. <laughs> if you do change it and it doesn't start up again, there's probably a little jumper on your motherboard that'll reset all this bio stuff back to the default. That will save you if you change yeah. something wrong. Also, notice in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, F6 to load fail-safe defaults. That's another way to do it. Those are the default values that, it, that the system came with. Uh, if you press that button, if you're having trouble, F7 is worth trying. Those are the optimized defaults. In here, we can see things, uh, our system health. Many BIOSes have this kind of information. You see our operating system, uh, our CPU temperature is 105 mm -hmm. degrees. That's very good, 100, 105, 106. It's a lot warmer than it was before. It is. It's warmed up a little bit, but anything less than 130 or 140 is fine. Okay. We also see that our system temperature is good and that our fans are rotating at a high speed, just what we'd like. We've only got one fan monitor, that's the CPU fan. The other fans, the system fan and the power fan, did not plug into the motherboard, unfortunately. We also see that our clock speed is 100 megahertz. That's modifiable, as is the CPU multiplier. In this case, we, we did have to change it to 12 to get our full 1.2 gigahertz on our chip. You may have to change those settings, but as Patrick says, don't modify anything if you <laughs> don't know what you're doing. Once you've got it the way you want it, go to save and exit and press return, and you're gonna save your settings. We've got it all set up. Well, now what do we do? It's time to install the operating system, yes. Leo. This is the part of your computer you stare at every day. The operating system, it could be Windows 98, Windows 2000, it could be Linux, it could be all sorts of stuff. We're gonna install that fancy new operating system
Windows XP. Now this uh, will oper this will install off the CD. It'll mm -hmm. actually boot up the system from the CD. So we set the settings in our BIOS to boot from CD. We're going to put the operating system CD in there, and I'm going to exit my BIOS, saving the changes. And 